What was it that Admiral Byrd found on the South Pole? Incredibly enough, in an official American Navy documentary film, we found footage of what Admiral Byrd found on the South Pole. He found giant freshwater, never freezing lakes with areas around them that were uh, free of any snow. And in that film, we show footage of the uh, Navy planes landing in these lakes. But even more so, he found, uh, to his amazement, that his planes were disappearing very quickly. A lot of his planes uh, were attacked by anti-gravity devices that were operated by the Germans there, by anti-gravity saucers. A lot of them crashed into invisible barriers and disintegrated in mid-flight. This is an indication that the Germans had already perfected the force field shields and they were up and operational around the German colony at Neuschwabenland. When he was retreating, basically the whole operation lasted for one week. They started in the, at the end of February 47 and by the first week of uh, March, they were through with uh, the whole operation and much, much earlier than scheduled, and they departed. And in an interview at Buenos Aires on his way back, Admiral Byrd uh, made the incredible statement that the Third World War would probably be with an adversary coming from the polar regions of our planet, an adversary that has the ability to fly unobstructed from pole to pole. He was referring to the Germans at their south uh, polar colony at Neuschwabenland that were operating their um, anti-gravity craft with impunity and could fly circles around the globe and of course would shoot out of the sky any of the uh, attacking American planes. The inner terrestrials surrounded the entrance gates with an electromagnetic protective dome which no being or weapon can penetrate. After all this happened, it became the greatest secret of mankind. It started ufology as we know it today. Indeed, there is a second humanity, an inner terrestrial race who had already built cities in the inner earth before the sinking of Atlantis. These extra and inner terrestrial races built time gates and anchored these cities on a higher subatomic frequency. After the great purification, these time gates will fall and at different places there will be once again access to the underground cities. In 1961, the Brazilian Navy was conducting a series of experiments in the Antarctic according to one of my colleagues who was in one of the naval ships, suddenly out of the ice packs, a large spacecraft emerges and takes off vertically at a terrific speed, shocking both the American and the Brazilian naval forces that were there. So it is clear that as late as 1961, we have official documentation from the Brazilian Navy that there is some other, emphasize other, underline this three or four times, life force or intelligence stationed at the South Pole, possibly to observe the uh, scientific developments on the planet, possibly to observe the uh, military operations and the forces of the East and the West in some type of Mexican standoff as the Cold War develops. We have clear documentation from other sources and other South American governments that some technology that is not human-based is there. That is to say, some type of higher evolutionary experience is there, and this is the next chapter of our quest. Why are they here? What do they want from us? And do they, namely the higher or alien intelligence, have as, were some type of directing mechanism both for the US as well as for the Soviets as to who goes into space and who conducts, as it were, the next evolutionary round of uh, space development. These are key questions that we must resolve. 
Also, gigantic cities of lights will descend out of their orbit to selected areas and will be anchored on the Earth. Right now, people who have reached a certain level of consciousness and are once again connected to the cosmic monad are drawn through their intuition to places chosen by the spiritual hierarchies in order to anchor the cities of light above these areas. These sites are absolutely secure. The Space Brothers and the spiritual hierarchies have created the so-called Islands of Light, where the Earth's frequency was increased so that all human beings and light workers can find each other on that level. Such areas are recognized by the fact that they attract an especially high number of people dealing with higher knowledge. These places have a higher grid anchorage. They are places of power, activated chakras, entrances to inner earth, and a present UFO surveillance. The Space Brothers are going to pay special attention to these areas when the cataclysms begin, because that is where the seed for the new mankind will be found. That is where the first contacts will occur on a physical and telepathic level. Many small and large centers, shelters of peace, will be established by spiritual people who live together, who work on themselves and teach others. To the new mankind, these sites will be study centers and the new initiation centers for the universal brotherhood. These islands of light are recognized by the fact that they do not belong to a certain denomination or sect, but that they are open to every reality, and that they know that many roads lead home. The highest goal is to increasingly live our lives and love ourselves. This time there will be no arch, because man himself is the arch. Again, as we raise the consciousness uh, and we transform our body from a state of corporeality, which means um, this type of substance, you see, uh, and as our atoms and as our molecules and as our uh, energy speed up, the DNA system is totally transformed into a higher octave and a higher frequency so that there is a whole new strain coming in as a result of this. Um, when we're passing through, for instance, the photon belt, there will be no darkness. It's all light. Everything in the body, uh, then, uh, of importance will be etheric in nature as opposed to uh, corporeal or dense or density or whatever, you see. Um, realities that we accept today will be no more. And um, so as a, as a result of that, the DNA system and everything which constructs humanness will be changed because we will now reach for our light body and will be of the light as opposed to uh, darkness and corporeality. So any change that's signified today scientifically or, or biologically and what have you in the DNA is because of this infusion of new consciousness and new light which of course is coming in at this point in time. We're, we're, we're many of us are, uh, many people already are uh, largely light although they, uh, they, they keep the body of corporeality to do what they have to do here on earth, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, many people are already in the fourth dimension. Uh, some are aware and some are not. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's where we all have to go. And, uh, of course, by 2011, as we pointed out, uh, all of us have the, um, the option and the, the privilege, if we choose to do so, of being in the fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. The photon belt is an intense field of photon radiation, light radiation which both according to several modern astronomers, astrologers, as well as uh, Mayan tradition, emanates from the center of our galaxy, uh, bisects the Pleiades star system and our star system at the same time. 